kind of reaction have you seen from the boys after the loss on Friday? First, it was tough. It was tough in the locker room. Um, we hate to we hate to disappoint our supporters. We hate to disappoint our people. We hate to disappoint ourselves uh, and and the organization. And obviously, after the game, there was a there was a big disappointment, a uh, big sense of responsibility, uh, a huge huge amount of pride. And listen, we got to turn the page. Monday was a great training session. Yesterday was very good, and today was very good as well. So it's just not too much about what we saw on on the locker room after the game or what we saw the last two days in training is what are we going to see on, on Saturday night and uh, and that's what that's what we're we are looking forward to that um, I wish we could play sooner I wish we could have played on Wednesday so it would have been way easier to to turn the page faster but it's not and it, it's Pittsburgh it's in Pittsburgh and we got to play on Saturday night and I can just wait I can't wait to see the the response from the players and, and from absolutely everyone not just the players it's the players the staff the supporters I want to see the response from absolutely everybody. With the changes on and off the field, you know, uh, how would you assess this season so far? No, we didn't start the way we wanted to. I've, I've seen a lot of growth in, in areas that we needed to uh, between game model, style of play um, and team culture. It's those three things have been aligned and it's been very clear. We need to find consistency now in results. I think we haven't had consistency of results or performance. Sometimes we, we've looked very good and we feel comfortable and we have won games. Other times we haven't looked good and it have not led to a good result. Um, so this is why we need to find consistency. Consistency of performance as a lead to results or consistency of, of results that give you the confidence then to bring those performances up. And then the third type of, of consistency is a consistency of personnel. You guys saw today how we have a lot more bodies in training now and, uh, and some of the guys that were hurt are, are coming back. Now, I mean, we have Uso back, we have Gabby back after seven weeks. And it's, I mean, it's, it's important to be able to have Emmy for half of the training session and Traore already running, to have Gallardo participate in the full training session. And it's, it's good, man, it's good. So we want to find those three types of consistency, which is results, performance, and personnel. Once we have those, uh, we're going to be okay. When you look at that last game, it looked like you made some kind of tweaks to the tactics, particularly over on that left-hand side. What was the, the thinking behind that and how do you think ultimately it went? Yeah, we, we were not comfortable in the first half. They were doing a good job. They were pressing in this 4-1-4-1 and, and we drifted Renzo to, to the left side on the build-up because we decided to utilize Danny Trejo as a wing-back. So in build-up moments, especially from goal kicks, you, you want to keep Danny hired up the field. So that means one of the centre-backs Left footed is on the left side, which was Danny Cruston, and then we needed to fill a space on that left side. So we decided to shift one of the midfielders to that space. Sometimes it went well, other times it didn't. Um, I also think it was we were not cleared. Sometimes we we're breaking that line, and then the third pass after we broke the pressure, I mean, it had to go forward and it went backwards. It had to, it had to go to the feet at times and it went forward. So we were not synchronized there. So at the second half, at the probably 49th or 50th mark, we talked and I talked to the players, I said, let's just build out in a three and a two. Let's just make sure we keep our pivots in, in central areas. We put Babu in a wide area to make sure that we could exploit the full width on that side with him and on the other side with Eddie. And then it allows the opportunity to then start controlling the game and being able to go forward and, and create some chances. But then, listen, we fell asleep on a throw-in and we all know how, how it ended up. Pittsburgh's a pretty compact team. When you watch them, what are the differences that you notice between them and a typical low block team like Las Vegas? Pittsburgh is a, it's a team I respect. I respect Bob a lot and it's, it's going to be tough. They're very compact. They're disciplined. Not a lot of space in between the lines or, or gap in between players. And, and it's a team that picks their moments to, to press. It's also a team that is, is very comfortable waiting for you. If you watch just let's just say open cup versus versus rivals that that have more uh, more let's say talented players or quality on the field because it's rosters that are more expensive they're okay waiting in that compactness to to wait for a mistake or someone to be building through the middle to win the ball and then get a transition moment for us we just got to be careful in the way we build up at the moments that we build up the moments that we want to utilize the middle of the field to build up because we will utilize it that's part of our identity but we just have to be cautious when when we go there and, and, and how to do it and when to do it as well. Do you think there's a risk from their side that they might have one eye on that open cup game they've got coming up? Mm, I don't know. I don't know because, listen, they, they played last week and, and then this is as a coach when you have to make a decision is you want your players to arrive with 
with a bit of rhythm to Tuesday night, right? And, and, and you want them to play a little bit, or do you just want them to have, I don't know, 10, 11 days of, of no competitiveness or, or rhythm to that match? Um, I don't know. I don't know what the what their coaching staff is, is going to do for us. It doesn't change a thing. We prepare for them the next way. We, we think about us, and then we'll see what, what they do on Saturday. These cross-country trips, do you, as a coaching staff, approach them any differently? How do you guys uh, try and keep the team light? Well, for us, it's it's it's, it's a bit different because tomorrow we, we got to fly very early. I mean, we, we fly very early and we arrive there at night, so it doesn't allow us the opportunity to train. We leave at, I mean, 6.30 a.m. We, we got to meet the players in order to head to the airport. So that means you, you're not training tomorrow. We're going to utilize tomorrow as a recovery day, as a day that we bring down the loads. And we utilize Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday to make sure that we can we can add those loads that we needed physically, recovery, uh, tactically, and and making sure that the game plan is it's all ready because then we train in Pittsburgh and I don't trust the opposition when I train over there. I don't know if there's cameras or somebody watching, so we don't do anything tactical on the road. <laughs> is it a bit of a relief that you know you've been through so many of these further away Eastern games that it's coming towards an end now? It's only what Miami after this one. Yeah, it is so, and it is. It's, it's, and it's not a secret for anyone. We've, it's, it's been tough, right, at the beginning of the year for, for multiple challenges and adversities that we, that we had to deal with, right? It's, it's, a, it's a heavy schedule on the, on the East. Not just that, it's, it's top teams in the East that you've had, had to, go, to go visit when you think about it. It's, it's Charleston, it's Birmingham, it's Tampa, now Pittsburgh, right? So it's tough, it's, it's, it's not easy. Um, also, I mean, the, the challenges that we have encountered earlier in the year with, with the injuries and, and with the change of personnel, it doesn't really allow you the opportunity to have continuity on the field. But at the end of the day, you just heard the group, man. The boys are ready, the boys, the boys understand, I mean, what, what we represent and for us is, and we go to the east, we stay in the west, we have to take a bus to Orange County or we have to fly it across the country for, for 10 hours and two different flights. We're going to approach every game the same way. And, and what I want and, and, and where we want to get is that it doesn't matter where we played, who we played and when we're playing, you guys see the same team on the field um, at all times. And this is the consistency that we need to find regardless of where we are, east or west. But also this is, I mean, it's, it's something that with the new team and all the challenges and adversities that we had to, ch to, 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 in, to embrace, it's going to take a little bit of time. So we're getting there and, and hopefully we're, we're very close and, and far. ¿Cuál fue el mensaje para el equipo después de la derrota el viernes? Ah, el mensaje fue que, que dolió muchísimo, que dolió muchísimo la, no solo por el resultado, sino por la forma. Un partido que, que en teoría pudimos haber controlado y debimos haber sacado un resultado positivo que nos ponía eh, en cuarto lugar en la tabla con un partido menos y, y a un par de puntos del tercero y el segundo. Entonces hay que pasar la página ya, estamos pensando en Pittsburgh, el equipo ha trabajado muy bien. Eh, el equipo está fuerte, está fuerte mentalmente y eso es lo más importante ahora, que podamos entrar en el próximo partido lo antes posible y tratar, tratar de traer un resultado de Pittsburgh que nos dé después el, el, la, la motivación de dos partidos en casa. Y Pittsburgh es un equipo muy versátil. Tú mencionaste que como se plantearon tácticamente en la US Open Cup, ¿cómo se le juega a un equipo así que es versátil? ¿Puede jugar atrasado? ¿Puede salir a jugar con toques rápidamente? ¿Cómo, cómo se planea ese, ese esquema? Absolutamente. No, absolutamente. Es un equipo que para leer los partidos es, es complicado porque te pueden presionar harto, puedes estar en un bloque bajo, como tú acabas de decir. Es un equipo que puede ser bastante directo cuando lo quieren ser, o si no, ahorita tienen centrales y volantes que pueden tener la pelota también. Para nosotros nos hemos enfocado mucho en nosotros, en nosotros, en qué podemos hacer para poder controlar el partido de la manera que nosotros queremos. Y después de, de cara a la formación o, o cómo está el rival planteado en la cancha, nosotros podremos adaptar una u otra cosa. Pero ahora la, el enfoque principal ha sido el nuestro. ¿Y la clave para eso es táctico, es esfuerzo? ¿Qué, qué, cuál, ¿Qué es lo que se trabaja esa semana? Son las tres. Yo creo que es la parte táctica de entender lo que queremos hacer. En la parte técnica tenemos que estar bien. Tenemos que estar bien. El partido pasado técnicamente muchos, eh, muchas pérdidas de balones innecesarias. Y después la parte de, de, del carácter, la voluntad. Juntamos esas tres y podemos tener un resultado positivo a donde vayamos, no solo este fin de semana. One thing, consistency-wise, not something that you can control, but you can see Elton Garcia again as the referee for the third time in 12 games now. Well, it's something you probably haven't planned for. What kind of an impact does that have when you see the same referee time and time again? Yeah, I, it's 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 been a lot of times already. Yeah, and um, listen, I don't I don't have 
anything against him. Um, I think he's a referee that has a lot of experience in this league and, and in MLS. And just like every week, I just I just hope that they they do a good job. And at the end of the day, that when fans pay tickets to, to go watch the games, they don't pay tickets to go watch coaches or referees or anybody else. They go pay tickets to watch a soccer game and watch the players. So all I want is for the players to be the the main focus on the players and the game. That's it, not the coaches or the referees. When you look at your team, I think one of the players that came in with a lot of hype around him hasn't quite lived up to that yet, but Fede. What do you think has been, I guess, the, the problem for him in terms of not hitting full speed so far? Well, we knew when, when we brought him in that this was a player that's come in with, with very little rhythm. Right when he was in Europe, he, he last last year he didn't have a lot of rhythm because of injuries. Then I mean he coaches changes and and he played the last two three games of, of the season. Before that he didn't play much. Then he had probably the longest off season break of his life. Because in, in Europe you don't you don't stop for three and a half months or three months when the when that break comes. He had to deal with the injuries with playing two games and then having three and a half months off. He shows up to preseason and and sadly he got hurt twice. So it's, it's physically, let's get him to where we want to get him. We understand what he's going to give us on, on the technical and the tactical aspect of the game, the way he reads the game, he, he positions himself. Um, it helps us a lot. But also, listen, it's, it's a tough league. It's a tough league for international players to come in and adapt right away. So there's a, there's a, there's a learning curve, there's an adaptation curve, not just for him, for a lot of players that hadn't been in the league before. And it's going to, I mean, when, whenever they adapt, not just, I mean, to, to the league, to the travel, to the teams, but also physically. Um, I think, I mean, we, we're all going to enjoy watching him. I, I don't think he's, he's been poured either. Um, I definitely agree that he's going to give us more. Um, he's, he's not there yet. And whenever, I mean, we're, we're, we're 11 games in and it's, and it's 34 games, we need Fede to peak at the right time and not just him, all his other teammates. And that's our job as, as coaches is to make sure and guarantee that those players are peaking um, at the right time. And then we've seen Carlos used in a more advanced role in these past couple of games. What is it specifically you're looking to see out of him in that kind of position and why did you make the call to move him up? Yes, um, well Carlos is, I mean, he, he, he can give us that when, when, he, when you break a line of press and then you can accelerate and, and, and go, go at, 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 a, at a back line with speed. That's what we want to try to do and that's, that's part of our identity. The reason why Carlos is playing higher of the field is because I mean, Gallardo is another number 10, he's hurt. Um, Emil Cuello, the other number 10, is hurt. So we've been having to, to play around and, and see, I mean, what, what players can we put in those spots that can give us something similar to those guys. Now having Gallardo back, that changes things. Having Emi training, that changes things too. Now you can start putting players where they're supposed to play. The same thing with utilizing Danny Trejo in a wide area. Last game, you know, you have Uso that is hurt. You have Gabi that is hurt. I mean, we started utilizing Darnell as a center back and now he's been playing on wide areas as well because of personnel, right? That, that we haven't had the opportunity to have all of them at full strength. Now when we have the, the team at full strength, we, th we should start seeing players play their main positions. Also, they have the resource to play at another position like Carlos did and like Trejo did and Cuello did in San Diego so many others but um, that will come that will come when whenever everybody's healthy what are the areas that need to improve most from uh, this past match to the next one well first of all it's we need we need to be more more cleared in, in possession when when we have the ball I think that I mean it was too many easy giveaways we we couldn't it took us too long to to take control of the game because at times we're trying to be too direct when we didn't have to be direct we could have started again and go to from one side to the other and and be able to control the game, especially at home. And then the character piece, we have to make sure that I mean we're more aggressive and we're more on the front foot. I felt that the guys, I mean, this, it was two wins in a row, and they were already thinking it's going to be three out of three wins. It's going to be, I mean, four wins out of five games. And 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 and, and I felt that we we stepped into the field a bit too relaxed, and then it took us too long to to get in the game. And once we got in the game at the 49th minute of the game, and we try to be on the front foot, then their goal comes, and then you're in trouble. Isn't it's a, it's a good learning experience from us. We have to make sure that we learn from this because this one hurts. But at the end of the day, the, the team is so strong. The players are so strong. The staff is strong. I, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm not afraid or scared of adversity or, or challenges. And, and this is exactly what this is. It's a, it's a big challenge, the route that we decided to take. And I knew that we were encountered ups and downs. 
And when when they when we're on an upside, when we're winning, I don't get too too hype. When we're losing, I don't I don't panic. And that's exactly the character that the locker room has. So let's see what happens this week in Pittsburgh. We have to come back with something from Pittsburgh, guys, because then we have two home games. Do you think the level of competition in the league is higher this year than it was last year or even the year before? Absolutely, 100%. And I think it's going to get higher next year, and it's just going to keep getting higher. It's, it's coaches um, getting more educational, um, education that they keep growing, they keep learning, they keep developing, they keep transforming. Um, it's, I mean, it's players that keep coming to the league and, and, and they bring things to the league that, that, that make the league more competitive on the field. And there's also the players that within the league, they keep growing. They keep growing and they keep getting better because of what I said earlier. This is the more the better coaches that you bring in, the, the fan base are understand the game a lot more and they push and they push and they demand and they support as well. So at the end of the day, also organizations wanting to invest more and keep growing. So everybody in the league wants to keep growing and, and that makes the league much more difficult year after year.